What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Merrick's Garage. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, I want to say welcome and thank you for checking out Merrick's Garage channel. The truck in the back, is it finished? That's the number one question I've been getting recently from friends, family, neighbors. When is the truck going to be finished? And the, the answer is, I, I don't know. I don't know if it'll ever be finished. Um, but it needs to be roadworthy and packed and ready to go because I am leaving for Moab here in less than a day. I've had a big list of things I wanted to get done on it. Some had to be done. Some needed to get done. Some should be done. And some just weren't going to get done. So let's blast through them real quick and then uh, we'll get to the rest of the video. There's something about packing that uh, that I enjoy, whether it's uh, knowing that everything has its uh, own place, everything has a home, knowing where everything is, having everything secure and easily accessible, all those things make packing kind of fun for me. So I've started like a week early, but uh, I've made some modifications I thought you guys might be interested in seeing. Uh, here's the back of the truck though right now. So recovery, small parts, liquids, and uh, other stuff over there. ARB fridge, that is actually hooked up and running uh, direct hardwired off the battery. I've got my uh, spare tire. I've got this awesome nocturnal welding fire pit, five gallons of gas. And then this is pretty sweet. Check it out. I was able to get my high lift jack up here and out of the way. So it mounts nice. No rattle. And I also installed this inverter over there. This thing can come off very easily should I need to. But what's great about this is I'm going to have uh, 120 volt power. And not just that, but clean power. There is a difference in inverters. An inverter is basically gonna take a 12 volt source and convert it to a 120 volt source. And so you can run laptops, anything that requires a 120 volt. What often happens with uh, cheaper inverters is you get a very um, uh, dirty um, electrical current and that can damage sensitive electronics that are, require a very specific voltage. So you get what's called a pure sine wave inverter. They're quite a bit more money, but they will save you a lot in the long run if you're hooking laptops and things like that up to it. So that's a pure sine wave inverter. It can put out to a thousand watts. Uh, the thing kicks butt. I've had it in my ammo can, um, but my solar panel's just not working right. So I'm leaving the ammo can at home, hardwired this in, and we'll see how it works. But hopefully I'll be able to charge my laptop and uh, get some videos for you guys. Let me show you what I've done to the interior. I realize I haven't talked to you guys about the interior on the truck much. We've been focused so much on the suspension frame and all the, you know, the running stuff. So let me just give you a quick dive in. That's right there is my OWL security camera. That thing is running 24 seven streaming to my phone on demand alerts everything this if there's movement in or around the truck it senses it and lets me know and i can actually live stream into the camera and see what's going on around and in the truck with a strong enough network connection um that's part of my security system on the truck i have quite an elaborate setup uh from mechanical to electrical to some other stuff that will remain undisclosed, but uh, we can save that for another day. Uh, I do think doing a security on one of these would be kind of cool so people could see how to lock these things down. Anyway, so moving inside, uh, the only thing I've really done to prepare for the trip is just, just really work on how it lays out and how much is in here. Did a little relief cut down here on the dash so I can fit my my winch remote in here. And why that's cool is I can operate the winch easily from inside the truck. Uh, I'm a lot more likely to grab the winch when I can just hit one of these buttons and have it work than I used to be when I had to go dig it out of the bag and then go crawl under the truck to hook it up because the way I've got the winch mounted, the, the remote plug 
is buried underneath. So uh, you can see I've got the the radio and the intercom and music going through my rugged radio up there. Those come to these cords that run up, and uh, they split off of that uh, carabiner right there, so that the the cords can move and be readily accessible, but they don't get hung up and snagged on a bunch of things. There is method to my madness when it comes to packing. It's not just cram everything in and hope for the best. The reality is, if you cannot get to the part or tool that you need, you're not going to be able to use it, and therefore you shouldn't have even bothered bringing it. So I wanted to make sure that stuff that we would need on the trail was readily accessible. Clothing, sleeping bags, stuff like that that's going to remain at base camp I can bury, but fluids, tools, parts, food... Um, that needs to be stuff that I can get to. And more importantly, stuff that my son can get to. So I spent quite a bit of time figuring out where everything would go and then um, building a base strategy about where I wanted it, keeping in mind if he could get to it. Once I had that all dialed, I was able to um, start packing everything else around that, that basic setup. And uh, it's worked pretty well. Uh, I'm stoked because I can secure everything down with these chains. The chains run through everything. So uh, even though it doesn't look that secure, you can't really get to anything because it's all chained down to the truck itself. So uh, yeah, had the boys come out and help me do some stuff. They decided that wrestling on the yard would be more fun. But that's okay. It's packed. It's ready to go. I just need to give my son a quick lesson on what his duties and responsibilities are going to be. Because he has many. Is, this, is that nice? Yeah. Yeah, I'll let you on to try it. Okay, and then Rye. You lay on my drum once again. Try that one out. We're both going to lay on that one too. Like, be honest, like, which which one? I like this one better. Okay, that's what we're taking. Okay, you can put it down. I kind of fit, right? Yeah, kind of. Okay, well, I'm taking the car camping one. Because I'm old and my bones ache. Okay, can you take those two down? Yeah. All of my kids have been camping since they were very, very little. This trip is a little different. It's just going to be my oldest son and I getting out there, living out of the truck for a week, doing some cool four-wheeling, exploring, and just having some really good father-son time. I, I can't tell you how excited I am about this trip. We're both a little nervous because there's a lot of unknown, but I'm taking that opportunity to um, just kind of teach him to embrace that uncertainty, to embrace that uh, unknown and drive towards it. Because ultimately that's where adventure lies. By dividing and conquering and only bringing my oldest son. I'm hoping that some one-on-one -on -one time can teach him how to roll up an air mattress properly, how to break camp, how to make camp. Uh, because when it's him and his brother, they usually end up just doing this the whole time we're camping. Which is... Totally cool, unless you're trying to clean up something. Okay. Hello. What do you think? Is this working? Yes. Okay, this is our, we're going for a little test run right now. Got the headsets locked and loaded. Listening to some Mongolian death metal. Uh, yeah. Ready for Moab. <laughs> Say something funny. Um, monkey sausages. That was pretty good, monkey sausages. So you've got the rugged radios. This is our intercom. So this has two functions. That's power on. Am I gonna be in charge of this? You may, I mean, I want you to know how to do some of this stuff. I'll, I'll run this, I'll run this, but I want you to have an understanding of how it works and what it's for. So the radio is a clip behind us. You, uh, once you get yours down, yeah. Uh, where was I? Okay, radios. So this is your volume, right? Yeah, volume. Yeah. So. Pretty sure if you go towards your face, it's like louder. Something like that. Yeah. One way's louder, one way's quieter. Here it goes. Okay. I don't want you blowing out your ears though. 
okay? Promise? So I'll have master control here, which I'll probably put pretty high, unless I can tell you fall asleep or something, and or something like that. I don't know. Um, then keep the mic, like I showed you, keep the mic close to your face, right? Believe it or not, I have not had a decent skid plate on my truck since I did the front link conversion 18 months ago. Uh, I've done all the trails with uh, without a skid plate, and why that isn't smart, it hasn't caused me any damage yet. Now, um, Moab might be different. I don't think I'm going to bash up my transfer case up there, but I don't know. And if I can build one now, I'm going to be all the better when I get there. Problem is, I've been running out of time. So... This is uh, the skid plate that I've come up with. I'm basically just taking this quarter inch plate and this is gonna span the frame rails underneath the transfer case to provide some sort of support and bash guard should I decide to high center my truck. Now, um, one of the big challenges is building something that's strong but also removable so you can get in there and get that thing off and be able to work on the transmission and transfer case should you need to. Uh, then it becomes a challenge that where do you put the bolts? Because if the bolts are exposed and you're dragging it over rocks, you're going to mess up those bolt heads. They're going to be impossible to take off or they're going to break and your skid plate's not going to be any good. So what I chose to do is to take those square tube that you're seeing that I'm tacking on right here. And I tacked a piece of plate or I welded a piece of plate on top of them and drilled it out a uh, half inch. That's where the bolt will go through. It's going to be recessed up into this square tube so that it's not going to be in any damage from getting hit by rocks and things like that. Um, yeah, thick, heavy plate. It's going to get some ribbing so it's uh, not just one long span. And I hope to get this thing up in time to get on the road tomorrow with it. Time's a wasting. So the idea is this is going to get drilled. And so there will be a through bolt up here that it will just bolt into. Um, so that's going to kind of protect the bolt head, obviously, and reduce uh, shear force on this more than likely. Uh, it'll bend the top plate before anything else, I'm thinking. Uh, the rest of this, most likely, is just going to step down uh, from here to here, if you see what I'm saying. I can just do, huh, that could actually be pretty easy to just throw a piece of sheet up and call it, um, yeah, TBD on that one, and then this is where that little kicker is going to go, so. In the last couple of weeks, it's been, it's been a big push, what have we done? We've done, um, um, uh, fixed the wiring on the front locker, so the front locker is working again. Redid all the front steering, moved the mounts for the ram, uh, checked and tightened all the bolts, changed all the hardware out, started building a skid plate, done the tube doors, got those skinned on both sides, did the sway bar, got the sway bar in, haven't done the bump stop strike pads, haven't done the rear gas tank, haven't done the rear bumper supports, but I, I think it's ready, and uh, yeah, I am stoked.